Today, I've titled my, my talk, my, my discussion here, as what every eighth grade boy needs to know about being a man. Okay. Now, how many of you recognize that some of the things that I've been saying, some of the things that we've been teaching and talking about are different than what you're hearing through your headphones? Are different from the, the, the things you're seeing on television or, or in movies? Okay. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about some fundamental lies that we've been told, that I was told as a young man, about what it really means to be a man. And I want to change the definition, I want to change the perspective of what that really means. But before we talk in too deep a detail, I think it's important that you know a little bit more about me. I realize this week I haven't really shared a ton about myself, I've shared a little bit here and there, and I realize for a lot of you, you don't really know who I am. In order, to, in order to trust somebody, in order to take this information that is contrary to everything that you've, you're taught through social media and, and, and through the internet, you have to trust the person you're listening to. And in order to trust somebody, you have to know a little bit more about them and where they come from and where this information that I'm saying even, where it's even spilling from. So I thought I'd, I'd take this opportunity. I grew up in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, there's a sweet picture of me with an awesome bull cut, fourth grade. Okay. Um, I, I grew up in an interesting environment because I lived in a house full of girls. I had two sisters and my mom, and, and, and then there was me and my dad. Okay. And I grew up kind of like with this, 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 uh, pulling, these pulling forces. Um, my, my mom's an elementary school art teacher. And so like with my mom, I would do like all sorts of like arts and crafts and like making things and drawing and painting and, 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 and we'd like go on bird walks and like all of these things, like write poems and stuff, like not super manly stuff, right? Yeah, and then over here with my dad, my dad played college basketball and it was like with my dad, we would do all like the manly stuff. Like, you know, we go fishing and we, you know, play basketball and football and baseball and spitting and wrestling and like all, you know, all the good like manly stuff. And so I felt like I, I felt like I came from a background where I was able to see kind of like a little bit almost of like two different worlds. And, and, and part of the reason why I'm talking to you today is kind of to, to talk about this, this, this idea of what it means to be a man and, and maybe look to correct a few things that we have horribly wrong. This is me in eighth grade. Eighth grade at Lakes Middle School. Okay, some of you might be asking, uh, Kowser, uh, is your hair highlighted? It looks a little lighter on the top. Um, yes, it is. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's super cool. That's super cool. <laughs> now, now, you don't have to lie to me because it's not super cool. <laughs> it's not super cool. But it was cool back then, okay? That's like what the cool kids did. Now, I don't know if any of you are like me when I was in middle school, but I was insecure. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't confident in who I was and so I tried to do things to make myself fit in. I tried to do things and look a certain way and act a certain way and talk a certain way because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I thought that's what would make people like me. I thought that's what get, would get girls to notice me. Maybe some of you are like me or you can understand maybe a little bit of that. And so, and so I did. I treated people a certain way. I, I kept people at a distance. I, I put on a mask. I put on a front of what I thought it meant to be a man because that's what I thought I was supposed to do in order to be liked, in order to be accepted, in order to be cared for. Later on in high school, you know, I went on, you know, this kind of the sports side of things kind of dominated everything because in high school, if you're on a, one of the varsity teams, you're like, you're a king. Okay? And so, you know, I had a pretty pretty quintessential high school experience, something that you might look at and be like, that's what I want. You know, I, I played on the varsity basketball team. You know, I was one of the valedictorians in my high school. Uh, I was dating the head, the, the captain of the cheerleading team. Um, I, you know, I was, I was senior, senior prom king. I won a car my senior year, a brand new car because of my grades. I mean, you look at that and be like, that's, man, you must have felt pretty good about yourself, but I still ask those questions. Am I, am I strong enough? Am I tough enough? Am I, am I a man? 
I still felt kind of hollow and shallow and, and unsatisfied with this life and this mask because I didn't really let people know me. They didn't really know me. They knew this guy at high school who acted a certain way and talked a certain way and walked a certain way. But it wasn't really me. It wasn't until later on in my life and when I went to, to college at the University of Montana um, where I started to really realize that it was okay to show people who I really was and to be myself. It, it took me a while though. I, I, met, I met this girl. Her name's Megan. I met this girl my freshman year of college and I was, I was still like all high schooled up freshman year. I mean, uh, she didn't even like me at first. <laughs> like, wasn't, didn't even like me in the slightest. She actually like, told one of her friends who was like, thinking about going out with me, she's like, don't go out with Noah. He is, he's a jerk. He's a tool. I was a tool. I mean, I was like the definition of that. And, 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 and I'm okay admitting that because I, I, was, I was still putting on this front. I was still putting up this game that I thought that I had to play. And... and <coughs> And then I, I started to be friends with her, and we started to build this foundation of friendship, which I feel like is the success of our marriage today, is that we were friends for a year and a half without even thinking about dating, without even playing this game of, does she like me, and what did she say, and you know, texting back and forth. It was just, we were just friends. And then, then something started to change, and something started to shift, and I started to realize how amazing and awesome she was, and I, I stopped putting up this front, and I started showing her who I really was, and, and, and we made a, a decision to move forward in a, in a dating relationship. You know, setting boundaries, setting parameters, setting clear goals for the future, because I had, I had, done, I had done the opposite in high school, where it's like, you look to score with girls because that makes you tougher. You look to hang them on your arm and walk down the hall because that makes you more of a man. And I had learned how much of a lie that was and how unsatisfying and how unfulfilling that was. And so we were married our senior year of college. I was 21 years old. And we've been married for the last eight and a half, eight and a half years. More in love every single day. And, and I, t I tell you this because it's like, if you're going to take advice from somebody, you had better know it's a credible source, right? You're not going to take relationship advice from the guy who's got like a jacked up, wrecked up marriage, okay? You're not going to go to the gym and, and, and hire a personal trainer who's more out of shape than you, <laughs> right? You're going to be like, dude, I, I could give you some advice, but I don't really want you giving me some advice if that's what I'm going to look like, if that's who I hire, okay? So I, 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 want, you, I want you to take this for what it is, as something that I've, I've learned, that I've grown through, that I've, I've, I've understood and, and learned from people that are wiser than me and from my own life experience. And, 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 and what I want to talk about is what it, what it means to be a man. Everybody say, be a man. Be a man. Everybody say it like you've heard it before. Be a man. Okay, I want you to think about the time in which you heard that when you can remember hearing that. Because we hear that phrase when we're showing weakness. We hear that phrase when we're, when we're crying. We hear that phrase when we're showing some emotion. And somebody says, hey, be a man. Hey, man up. Hey, dry up those tears. Hey, we don't do that. Hey, hey get yourself together, then come back and be a man. And we have this idea, this mold of what a man is and that we have to somehow shove ourselves into this mold even if we don't fit. And we have to act a certain way, talk a certain way, walk a certain way, treat people a certain way. And we're lied to. I was lied to. The same lies that I was told are the same lies that are being told today, that have been told to you. You know all of these lies, I guarantee. I'm not telling you anything new, but I want to put it together and I want to highlight some of these things. The first lie that we're told is that we can't show emotions. Men can't show emotions. Except for what? Anger. anger. We can show anger. We can get real mad. We can show anger. Because that still shows that we're tough. We can't show emotions. We can't cry. We can't show weakness. Because men are tough. Men are impenetrable. Unshakable. It's a lie. Another lie we're told is that we must be good at sports. Every young boy on every elementary school playground understands this at an early age. That somehow life is a competition. And that if you can't, the boys who can hit the fadeaway jump shot or throw the perfect spiral 
are somehow given a little bit more manliness, given a little bit more worth. They walk a little taller on the playground and they make fun of and they put down the boys who can't. And so you try to hang. You, you, you try to keep up. Even though you don't fit that mold, even though that's not you, that's not who you are. We say that, that life is a competition and, and, and we walk around the middle school stepping on other people because if I step on you, I feel that much taller. And if I make fun of you, I feel that much better about myself because you're that much lower. And we're told that we need to compete with every single person that we encounter and that if a guy challenges you, man, you, you got you to put him in his place. He's not tougher than me. He's not stronger than me. He's not better than me. And we're in competition even with our closest friends. It's what we're told. We're told that size and strength equals masculinity or manliness. If you're big and you're tough and you're strong, you're somehow more of a man, which was a real problem for me because when I entered high school, I was five foot two and I weighed 97 pounds. Okay? I was a little guy all through school. I didn't grow <laughs> until junior year of high school when my body decided like, okay, it's time, and grew like seven inches in a year. But all my life, I felt like I had to be tough. I felt like I had to be, you know, put other people down and treat people a certain way because I wasn't this big, tough, strong guy. So I had to act like I had to look like it. I had to treat people like I was. Some of you might be in the same boat. You might understand that a little bit. <clears throat> We're told as a man that our success as a, as a man is directly linked to the quality of our job, the money in our bank account, or the toys in our garage. And we're told that if you're a successful man, you've got the big house, you've got the cash on hand, you've got the toys in the garage, you've got the boat, you've got the, you got the cars, and the, and the guys that we look up to and the people that we admire and the role models that we, we uphold on this pedestal are the ones with all of these things because they're successful, they're valuable, they're a real man. But that couldn't be more farther from the truth. Value is not based on what we've gained or earned. We're also told that girls are prizes to be won. Girls are sexual objects to be enjoyed, to be conquered. That somehow this is some sort of a game. And that the more you score, the higher you walk, the more of a man you actually are. The more girls that you hook up with, the more manly you are. We hear things like, how many of you have, how many of you have ever heard things like hit it and quit it? Or get some, or tap that. Like, like, like there's some kind of an object. Like it's some sort of a game. Like, like that's not somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, a real person with real feelings and real emotions and real self-worth. We're told that men don't let anybody too close. Don't let anybody too close. Keep everybody at a little arm's distance. Even your closest friends, don't let them too close. Don't let them see who you really are. Because we're so scared that if we show people who we really are, they might not like us. They might think we're weak. And so we keep this front. We keep this mask. We don't let anybody too close. Keeping ourselves from the one true thing that we desperately need and desire, which is real, meaningful, and close relationships. We're told to lie. We're told to cheat. Told to hustle. Get to the top. Climb the ladder. We're told that if you're not first, you're what? Last. Last. And that's a lie. That's a lie. So if this is the mold that we've made, if this is the mold our culture and society has created for men, we should maybe ask the question, how are we doing? How are we doing as men? If this is our standard, how are we doing as leaders, as fathers?
I read recently that by the age of 21, the average boy will spend 10,000 hours playing video games by the time he's 21. Most of the time, that's spent in isolation by yourself. You've spent 10,000 hours practicing keeping people away, being by yourself, not interacting in meaningful ways with real live people, but with fantasy and with a screen and with a made up world. And we wonder why we can't actually really connect and why we can't actually really enter into meaningful relationships because we spent 10,000. Could you imagine if we took half of that and we spent 5,000 hours? Practicing being a good friend, being, being, being a good son, and communicating, and having relationships. Guys are 30% 30 per, 30 more likely to drop out from school. 30% more likely to drop out from school than girls. Girls are, out, girls are outperforming guys in school on all academic levels, from elementary school to graduate school. Girls are outperforming guys consistently. 43% of American children live in a home without a father. Dads are leaving. Dads are taking off. Men are quitting on their families, starting new ones. And so many of you, my heart breaks for you because you're part of this 43%. You can sit here and you can tell me a thing or two about what it means to grow up in a house without a man and without a father and asking yourself these questions to other people of, am I, am I a man? Am I tough enough? Am I good enough? Seeking this validation from people around you or looking up to the people that you've put on pedestals as celebrities because there's nobody at home to show you this. And my heart breaks for you. My heart breaks for that situation. We need to teach men to stick around. We need to teach men to fight for their families, for their kids. 71% of pregnant teenagers lack a father in their lives. And 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Now, now, if this is our mold for men, and this is what it means to be a man, I think it's pretty safe to say that we're not doing so hot. That something's, something's fatally wrong with our system, with our mold that we're making and forcing ourselves into. So what's the truth? The truth that I've come to know, and that I hope you write down, <laughs> I mean, if you've been lied to for 14 years, I would hope that you're going to try to cling to some truth. You're going to try to cling to something that's going to help set us on the right track. This truth I've come to know in my own life, in my own experience, and from people that are much wiser and smarter than me, who have taught me, who have shown me an example of what it really means to be a man. First element of truth is men should be free. Everybody say free. free. Everybody say free. free. Men should be free to show emotion. <clears throat> men should be free to show emotion other than anger. They should be able to show passion even if that passion is for a drawing or for a painting or for a poem or for a song or something other than a football. Men should be able to show that passion for a person for a cause, without being looked down upon, without being called a sissy. Men should be able to show empathy and care for other people even if they don't know them. They should be able to do that without being looked down upon or looking down as weak. <coughs> Men should be able to show love. Men should be able to say, I love you. And have somebody say, I love you back. Without feeling somehow soft or somehow weak. Men should be able to communicate their feelings and their thoughts. Men should be able to communicate their feelings and their thoughts. Now, what you need to know is 
if you can't or you haven't practiced communicating your own feelings and your thoughts, how are you ever going to understand another person's feelings or thoughts? <laughs> I mean, one of our first questions that we asked over here is, why are girls so complicated? How are we ever going to attempt to understand the emotions and the feelings of somebody else if we can't even understand ourselves and communicate our own feelings? We keep everything bottled up, everything kept inside because we don't want to let anybody know anything because we feel like they're going to judge us or tell us that we're weak. Men should be able to be vulnerable with other people. Everybody say vulnerable. vulnerable. Now vulnerable, in our, our, our previous definition of being a man, vulnerable is a curse word. It's a curse word. Because being vulnerable means to really show people who you really are. And to, to not have this mask on. To be who you really are. And to let other people know you and to get to know other people in real ways. Men should be able to do that. Because without vulnerability, we can't actually have real relationships. Some of you, you've never had a real friendship. A real, true friendship. Because you keep everybody at a distance and you don't let them know who you really are. And you kind of keep this mask and this toughness, this facade. But we need that. We desperately need that. Men should look out for women. They should look out for women as an opportunity to protect them and honor them and help them rather than using them and abusing them. You all have an opportunity, even here at the school, to build women up rather than tearing them down, rather than setting this unrealistic expectation for what they need to look like, act like, talk like, walk like, dress like. You have an opportunity to build them up rather than tear them down. I mean, there's a girl who's not going to eat lunch today because of something you said in seventh grade about her being chubby. That needs to stop. A real man should look to protect women. Men should live lives of integrity and honor. We need to start teaching men. We need to start believing as men that we need to do the right thing all the time. Even when it's the tough choice. Even when it's the unpopular choice. Even when it's the difficult choice, we need to make the right choice. We need to do the right thing. Even when our family's a mess, even when things are going bad, even when bills are stacking up, we need to show up. We need to act right. We need to do the right thing and be there for the people that we're committed to. We need to live lives of integrity and honor. Men should be leaders in their own home. They should be leaders in their community. They should be leaders in their workplace. Rather than topping the list for video game usage and pornography usage and domestic violence and rape, right now in our country, domestic violence and rape is at an all-time high with one out of every five women in the course of their lifetime will be subject to sexual assault or rape. That's 20% at the hands of men. We shouldn't be topping the charts and dropout rates. We should be leading the way and doing the right thing and working hard and helping others. Men should look to serve others rather than simply being served or simply competing with everybody that's around you. Everybody that comes within your 30-foot bubble that you compete with. Men should look to help other people and serve other people rather than just be served yourself. And contribute to a cause. Contribute to something that's bigger than you. At the end of your life, who was benefited simply because you were alive? Whose life was made better simply because you existed? These are the types of questions we should be asking ourselves. Not what can I get out of this. Not who can help me, who can serve me, who can satisfy me. Men need close and meaningful relationships. We need them. We need them like we need air in our lungs. We need to stop training ourselves to be in isolation and to only interact with people over the internet or over our video game headset, or over Snapchat, or over text, or over Facebook. We need to actually have real, meaningful, face-to-face -face relationships. 
Because right now men are being trained to fail in relationships. Because we can't communicate. We can't show emotion. We can't show empathy. We can't forgive. We can just compete. And we're failing. Men should base the value, their worth, not on the money in the bank or the car in their garage, but on the value, their value on the relationships that they've developed, on the lives that they've touched, and at the people that they've helped. Because if you were on your deathbed at the end of your life, you're not going to look back and ask yourself, you're not going to be looked back and thinking of all the trophies you won, all the awards you were given, all the money that you made, all the cars and the toys that you had. You're not going to be thinking about that at all. You're going to ask yourself two questions. One is, who did I help? Whose life did I make better because I was alive? And second, you're going to ask yourself the question of who did I love and who did I let love me? Because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, the relationships that you make and allow yourself to have are the only true currency that you can make, the only true valuable thing that you can create. I, I firmly believe that if we look to apply these things, if we look to this new definition of what it means to be a man, it's a game changer. <laughs> it's a game changer. It'll change the way that we are sons. It'll change the way that we are friends. It'll change the way that we are boyfriends, or that we are husbands, or that we are people in our communities. And it's not too late for you to change. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing about you being in your seat right now. It's not too late. Sure, you've been lied to. I was lied to as well. It's not too late for you to make a change. And start speaking some truth into your life and in the lives of others. I want to finish talking about our greatest desire. What I feel, if we cut the crap, if we cut all this, this man shield, man facade, if we cut all that, what our greatest desire is. I believe our greatest desire as men, as humans, is intimacy. Intimacy is simply being known, being loved, and being accepted. That's our greatest desire. To be known, to be loved, and to be accepted. But the thing about intimacy is, is we're seeking it currently. We're seeking it in all the wrong places. We're seeking intimacy in all the wrong places. We, we seek virtual intimacy. <laughs> we seek virtual intimacy through, through social media and through connections with people via Snapchat and the web and, and, and Facebook and Instagram. We think that followers means friends. It doesn't. We, we seek virtual intimacy with pornography and that it makes us feel better about ourselves that, that we can pretend that she's having sex with me. That we can pretend that she really loves me. We can pretend that we have all these relationships that aren't even real. And so we, we, we still feel hollow inside. We seek intimacy in the dating relationships that we seek out. Now, I don't know about middle school relationships now, but when I was in middle school, hey, when I was in high school, it was a completely self-seeking relationship. What do I get out of this? What is it going to do for me? How am I going to be benefited? I I'm sorry, but I, I mean, if you're, if you're in a relationship right now as an eighth grader, I I'd ask you to sit and ask yourself, why am I in this relationship? Is it because I'm, I'm really seeking to know and care for this person if I'm thinking toward the future? Or does it do something for me? That I get to walk down the hall holding her hand be like, hey everybody, hey, 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 you guys looking? Hey, look who's holding my hand. <laughs> hey, look who's getting in my car. <laughs> hey, look who just kissed me on the cheek. You guys see that? Yeah, you did. Yeah. And you walk a little taller, you walk a little tougher. And you think if you hook up, 
with girls and it makes you more of a man when it's 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 it shouldn't be about that we we focus so much in dating we focus so much on finding the one I need to find the one and I'm gonna search through all of these girls I'm gonna search through as many as I can until I find the one and and I think what, what, if, what if instead of focusing on finding the one, what if we focused on being the one? What if we focused on being the one and investing in ourselves and building ourselves up so that we're ready for a real relationship rather than just broadcasting our own social insecurities onto a relationship that's never going to fulfill us? What if instead of focusing on finding the one and having her support you or whatever else, you focus on being the one and being the man that you should be and letting that worry about itself later. I think we'd save ourselves a lot of heartbreak. I think we'd save ourselves a lot of drama, a lot of issues. We seek intimacy through casual sexual encounters like that's going to make us better, like that's going to make us more of a man, more whole, more complete. Not realizing the impact how it affects every relationship that we'll ever be in and how it affects us and just feeling, instead of feeling satisfied, we have this empty hole, this empty feeling where we just have to fill it and fill it and fill it and fill it. Not being satisfied. Now, I need you to know that it's not a wrong passion. It's not a wrong feeling to want to have sex, to want to express yourself sexually. That's not a bad feeling. Sex is a good thing. Sex is a good thing, and I feel like so many times we don't, we, we, that, that message doesn't come across. It comes across as sex is dirty, sex is, 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 is perverted, it's wrong. But sex is a good thing. The desire and this passion for sex is, is a good feeling. It's not a, it doesn't make you weird, it doesn't make you perverted. But what we need to know is that this passion, a good passion in the wrong place, can lead to destruction, can lead to damage. Now, I was thinking of a clever way to show you this, and I figured in a, in a room full of pyromaniacs, right? I mean, if we're being honest, right? Right? In a room full of pyromaniacs, what better way to demonstrate this than to build a fire in the middle of the classroom? Okay? Some of you are like, I am so awake and so alert right now. This is the best lesson ever. <laughs> so, when we, when, we, when we look at this here, okay, some of you are like, do I need to leave? Do I need to run? Call somebody? Call? Okay, just, just follow me here. The, everybody here sees the problem with this situation. The problem is not the fire. Fire is not a bad thing. Fire can warm your house. Fire can cook your food. Okay? The, the problem isn't the fire. The problem is the fire has no boundaries. The fire, the passion, has no parameters. And, and the, the same fire that will, can warm your house in winter is the same fire that can burn a forest to the ground in the summer. And, and we, we go around lighting these fires because we desire this intimacy, we desire the sexual expression. And we light these fires in all of these relationships that aren't meant to hold it. There's no parameters. There's no boundaries. And we get burned. And we burn other people. And we, we, we see damage. We see destruction. What we need to know is that if we are releasing passions that are meant for a loving, committed, lifelong relationship like a marriage we're gonna get burned we're gonna see damage we're gonna see heartache we're gonna see problems the problem isn't the fire the problem that the, the fire needs some parameters the fire needs some boundaries sex sex is good but sex is powerful sex needs some it needs some parameters it needs some guidelines it needs some boundaries Sorry to disappoint you, I'm not going to light it on fire. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, bummer. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think you see the problem with that. Um, I've used this illustration before and I want to use it again because I need, I need you to know and understand that, that, that sexual behaviors, they have a permanency to them. We can't take them back. There's no undo button. And so when we're building these fires in, in, in other places, in other relationships, and we're hooking up and we're shacking up and we're, we're being physical, what you need to know and realize is that, is that that person, that encounter, they get to keep that. They get to keep that. And maybe you're sitting here and you're, and, and you're, you're, you're like, that's, that's too weird. I can't, I can't save that. You're asking the question, how far can I go rather than how much can I save? And you're being physical and you're being sexual and you, 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 you're like, well, I, if, if I'm not getting girls and if I'm not hooking up, I'm not a man. I'm less of a man. I'm weak. I'm a sissy. Nobody's a virgin. Nobody does that. Nobody saves that. And you listen to that lie. And then what happens is you, you find somebody that you want to build that fire with, that lasting fire for a lifetime. And this is what you have to give? This is what you have to offer? How much better? How much more special? How much more meaningful to give this? This is what my wife gave me. Whole, complete. I was the first guy she ever kissed. Sure, she had gone out on dates with other guys and had boyfriends, but she set boundaries. She set parameters. This is the most special gift that you can ever receive, that anybody can ever give. Okay? And I will tell you that it, it, it ripped my heart out of my chest to explain to my wife, to my future bride, to my girlfriend at the time as we're talking about this, that, that I hadn't done the same. I hadn't, I hadn't waited for her. That she was thinking of me all the while when she was in high school, all the while when she was in college, even though she didn't know my name. But I was thinking of myself. I was thinking of getting mine. And, and to watch her cry and to watch her weep and to see how much hurt I caused her, I don't wish that upon anybody. Now, some of you might be saying, well, crap. I'm already halfway there. I've already messed up. How cool would it be if, if, if your story was, hey, you know, I, I'm not perfect and I have messed up. And that's the reality for most of us. But there was this day in eighth grade where I, I made a change. I made a decision to do things differently. I made a choice to start being future-minded and thinking toward the future rather than just for the moment, rather than just for right now. What if your story sounded like, hey, you know what, I messed up and I'm not perfect, but today and tomorrow and for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years of my life, I'm going to start treating women the way that I would want some guy to be treating my future wife with respect and with honor. And I want, to give you, I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to realize that you hold the key. You possess this choice. Okay? You can't do anything about what happened last month, last year. It's in the past. Let it go and learn from it. But you can't do everything about today and tomorrow. And I have this gift for you if you want it. It's a card. It's a commitment card. It says today. I, fill in your name, make a commitment not to perfection. Because if we think we're making a commitment to perfection, the moment we fail, the moment we look at pornography, the moment, the moment that we let our boundaries down and we cross the line, we think, oh shoot, I'm, 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 I screwed up. I wrecked it. I wrecked it all. No, you didn't. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. Get your mind back right and start doing the right thing again. I make a commitment not to perfection, but to perseverance. Everybody say perseverance. perseverance. Knowing that sexual behaviors cannot be taken back, they are powerful, they are permanent. Today I recognize that I hold the key to my own heart. I am valuable, I am worthwhile and important. I deserve to be treated with the highest respect. I am worth waiting for.
It has a space you can put your own boundary line in here, a place you can sign it and date it. I hope that you put this up somewhere. You can put it in your wallet. I have people come back to me five years later and, and still have these. Keep reminding yourself, okay? This is a commitment to perseverance, okay? And if you want one of these, if you want to make that, that, that decision, that commitment today, I want you to grab one real quick. I hope that you make this real for yourself. I hope that you take this seriously enough and, and that you forever enjoy the benefits of making good decisions. I hope that you help spread this message. How many of you have younger brothers? <laughs> How many of you think that this might be a good thing for you to watch with them and talk to them about, maybe share with them? How many of you wish we would have heard this five years ago, three years ago, ten years ago? Okay. And I want to help spread this message to every single young man on the planet. Not because I want more followers or I want more fame and glory. I don't care about that in the slightest. I care because of the thousands of people I've heard from over the year who said, I wish somebody would have told me sooner. I wish I had somebody in my life telling me these things. So help me spread it. It's called What Every Eighth Grade Boy Needs to Know About Being a Man. Put it on YouTube by this Sunday. Share it, tweet it, text it, send it, watch it with your little brother. Watch it again. Remind yourself again. Teach yourself again. This is not a decision that you make one day and then you're just like, sweet, that's done. It's a daily decision to think future-minded. I hope that we change the, the meaning of being a man into something that's honorable, something that that's, has, has value and integrity. Something that values relationships more than it values sports, more than it values athletics. I thank you guys for listening. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope this message was meaningful for you. And I hope that now you have a new definition of what it means to really be a man. Help me to spread this message as far and wide as we possibly can. Send it, share it, um, set, write a comment if this was meaningful for you. Um, I appreciate your feedback. and and uh, appreciate that, hearing from you. Uh, if you want one of those commitment cards, there's a link down below in the description for you to download one for yourself. Thanks again.